All right, it's Tuesday, September 13th, 2016, and here are the stories we're covering this week. The operators of the VDOS DDoS for Hire service have been arrested. Google is offering Uber competitor pricing on Maps. The Samsung Galaxy Note 7 has been recalled because it might catch on fire. A robot has been used to operate in a man's eye with perfect results. And weaponized drones are now legal in North Dakota. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Jeff Weston. Yeah, man. You're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. yeah, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? You need hosting. One of the things about a hosting account is you don't want to have limitations put on your website. It's true. How much hard drive space do you have? How many email accounts? How many domains can point to it? Well, we've got an amazing deal for you. For a very limited time, cat5.tv slash dreamhost. For just $5 and a bit of change per month, you are going to get unlimited website hosting, unlimited email accounts on that hosting uh, service. You are also going to receive a free domain name. Ooh. So your own .com. Nice. To put that amazing website that you've been working on it's on true. there. If you run, if you want to build a WordPress site, fine. Sign up. Cat5.tv slash dreamhost. Just don't put Panama Papers on it. Just don't do it. But hey, uh, it's a great deal, folks. Best deal you're going to find. $5 and change per month. Go to cat5.tv slash dreamhost. I'm Jeff Weston, and here are the top stories from the Category 5.tv newsroom. One of the more popular cyber attack peddlers just came crashing down. <whistles> Israeli law enforcement has arrested Yardin Bidani and Hite Huri as part of an FBI investigation into their alleged control of VDOS, one of the most popular paid attack platforms. According to information unearthed by security guru Brian Krebs from a third party hack targeting VDOS, the teens. Uh, two teens raked in nearly six or at least six hundred and eighteen thousand dollars, launching a majority of the distributed denial of service campaigns that you've uh, been hearing about in recent years. The platform itself is also offline, although that's due to one of the VDOS victims, BackConnect Security, using a bogus internet address claim to stem the flood of traffic hitting its servers. Bedani and Hurry weren't exactly careful, though, about covering their tracks. Uh, Krebs says the pair hosted VDOS on a server connected to Hurry, and its email and SMS notifications pointed to the two. They even wrote a technical paper on the DDoS attacks, while Bedani's old Facebook page references the Applejack pseudonym, that's Apple J4CK, he used to conduct VDOS business. And if that weren't enough, VDOS refused to target any Israeli site since its owners, since it was the owner's home country. Both suspects are out on bail, although they won't have much freedom. Officials have placed them under house arrest for 10 days, confiscated their passports, and barred them from using any telecom devices for 30 days. It's unclear if they face extradition to the U.S. Now, the bust isn't going to stop paid denial of service attacks. As Bidani and Hurry demonstrated, it doesn't take much more than a botnet and some basic business savvy to get started. However, it may put a temporary dent in the volume of those attacks. And it'll certainly spook VDOS competitors who have been careless about hiding their activities. Wow. Yeah. You know, I, the question sometimes comes up, Jeff. Why do hackers do this? Why do hackers attack websites? Six hundred and eighteen thousand plus dollars is why. That's they do why. It. That's why they do it. Can you imagine being a teenager and splitting that two ways? That would buy you a few boxes of craft dinner. They'd be driving a nice little sports car. I'll tell you that much. Yep. That's why. Yep. That's why. Wow. All right, Google has announced Thursday that it's adding a new ride-hailing partners to Maps. Uber was already integrated into Maps. Now users will also be able to see price estimates for Lyft and some more region-specific options such as Git in New York City, all without leaving the Maps app. Basically, Google just created the first ever ride-hailing price comparison tool. 
Now, Uber's partnership with Google is different from their API, which has seen sites like uh, Harvard startup Urban Hail blocked for offering competitive pricing. Now, with Google, however, it is a direct integration and doesn't use Uber's API, so it's not a violation of the terms of use. Google has partnered with other ride-hailing services through Maps before, Ula in India and 99 Taxis in Brazil, among others. This is the first time it's adding direct competitors to Uber in the U.S., though. So why Uber was willing to work with Google to build a price comparison tool while simultaneously blocking startups like Urban Hail? Well, the most likely reason is because Uber needs Google. Google Maps has hundreds of millions of users, so that means more exposure and more riders for Uber. Now, the price comparison aspect is just an unfortunate side effect that Uber's really going to have to accept or risk losing that exposure. I've never used Uber, but uh, for anybody who does, they either love it or they hate it. And every time I turn on the news, there seems to be some sort of competition or anti-Uber something going Sure. On. Yeah, like, why not? The, the, these guys are taking a bit of a beating as far as having a corner on the market. But that's tech nowadays. Everything moves so fast. Good, though, that Google's able to get around the API um, terms of use because of the fact that the, otherwise you end up falling into this monopolist yes. situation. Yep. Really, that's makes, what it comes down to. Makes me wonder, though, if as these things happen, people are going to get smarter with their contracts to try and block this kind of stuff so that, say, Google couldn't do that. But like you said, though, would you, would you discard Google's, uh, Google's promoting your service? Yeah. Come on. Like, yeah. if, when you go on to Google to search for cab... And you click on it, and boom, you just pull the first one at the best price. Don't you want to be that? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't want to throw it away. No, definitely not. <laughs> All right. Airline passengers have been warned by U.S. authorities not to switch on or charge their Samsung Galaxy Note 7 phones when on board a plane. Now, the Federal Aviation Administration also advised against packing the phones into any checked-in luggage. Samsung recalled the phone last week after reports emerged of the device exploding during or after charging. Qantas and Virgin Australia have also told customers not to charge or use the phone during flights. Now, Samsung said that it would speed up shipments of replacement Galaxy Note 7 phones to ease safety concerns. Samsung has said that battery problems were behind the phones uh, that caught on fire, but that it was difficult to work out which phones were affected uh, among those that were sold. Now, the phone was launched just last month and has been otherwise generally well received by consumers and critics. Now, some 2.5 million Note 7s have been shipped globally. That's a lot. Samsung has said customers have already, who have already bought the phone will be able to swap it for a new one and that it would take about two weeks to prepare replacement devices. Wow. That's a whole lot of devices that have to go under recall. Jeff, didn't you just get a new Samsung? I did, but it wasn't a Note 7. Okay, what is it? It was, it was just an S7. S7, okay. S7 Edge. Because you, as you're saying that, it wasn't yours a 7? It, it, 7, yes, but not the Note. Everything's I, 7 now. iPhone 7. Well, it's Samsung the, S7. It's the generation. Samsung Note 7. It's because it's the 7th generation. It's, it's just like Windows 10. It was the 10th operating system. So, but nobody fall. Oh, I guess OS 10. Oh, is that how it works? That's how it works. So this is how they compete with yep. numbers. It's true. Yeah. Wow. So are, are yours have not been recalled. This is specifically just the note seven at this point. Mine has not been recalled. Mine has not blown up on me. Good. Uh, it does not overheat <laughs> when it's charging. We had this discussion about the, the speed charging features and yes. that would be my fear is like you're pumping so much juice into this thing. Yeah. I will say my charger gets hot. Yeah. When I, when I, when I speed charge the, uh, the little end of the cable that connects to my phone, that does heat up. Let uh, me just remind you. But, yeah, I know. But it doesn't heat up so that it's hot. It's just, it, there's like a warmth to it. Okay. And that's the cable itself. It's not the phone. But it only does that when it's speed charging. So, hmm. obviously, there is some element of 
heat involved. Mm. But uh, not enough to cause things to go. Don't put it under your pillow while you're charging it. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Do people still do that? Um, I think maybe. Not me. Wow. I've heard some stories of some teens that have had this happen to them. Yes. Wow. So well, you know what I think it is? Is you put on you put on some music or whatever else. You put it under your pillow and then you lay your head on the pillow so that you can hear it without disturbing other people. See, I just use headphones. Use earbuds. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I do. But I think that's why it happens. I think that's why they end up putting it under their pillow. I think it's because they're trying to sneak around at night so parents don't see. It's like you can oh, hear the come down the hallway it and it's too. like. Right under the pillow, yep. Yep. Where's your phone? Uh, I don't know. I lost it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> the, the pillow's smoking. <laughs> uh, one of our sons, when he was, um, when he got his phone, I should clarify, when our phones expire on our contract and yes. we get a new one, yeah. we just give them the old phone okay. without a plan on it so that they can use the Wi-Fi at home and play Minecraft or whatever. All right. Um, but uh, one of them, um, he was getting up in the middle of the night, grabbing his phone, starting to play at like 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh. But he got sneaky because once we caught him under the pillow, he started putting it between the pillow and the pillow cover. Oh. So we'd lift up the pillow. And it's not there. And it's not there. Mm -hmm. But I happen to pick up the pillow, and I'm like, ooh, this is heavier. Oh, look, oh, yes. there's a phone shape in the case. <laughs> so Danger. He was getting sneaky. Not bad yeah. for a five-year-old. <laughs> Where does he get it from, Jeff? Where does he get it from? Definitely not me. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What's next? Uh, surgeons have used a robot to operate inside the eye and restore sight in an absolute world first. A team at Oxford's John Radcliffe Hospital used the device, controlled via a joystick, to remove a membrane one hundredth of a millimeter thick. That's small. Now, surgeons hope that the procedure will pave the way for more complex eye surgery. How is that not complex as it is? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're just getting started. Wow. Uh, so anyway, for more complex eye surgery that is currently possible uh, with the human hand. Now, the patient, Dr. Bill Beaver, is a 70-year-old from Oxford, and he says he's delighted to be the first person to undergo the robot eye procedure. The surgery was successful. Dr. Beaver's central vision in his right eye has been restored. Good job. He said, the degeneration of my vision was very scary, and I was fearful I would lose my sight entirely. So for this uh, intervention to take place so effortlessly is a real godsend. I love this story. Totally cool. I love it when technology is used to better the life of Absolutely. people. Absolutely. I, I think it's great. I, I love this kind of stuff when you can when you can get so precise with something like that. It's unreal. It, it's great. They can work at like nano levels. Yeah, one one thousandth of a millimeter. Was it a millimeter or centimeter? I think it was millimeter. Millimeter, you said that, something hundredth small. of a millimeter. Or? But to think that that in its of, of itself was causing his central vision loss. Yeah. So here you go. Let's just put a just robot in your eye and fix that for you. Here okay. You go. Yeah. But that's a small robot. No, it's a big robot, but a very precise robot. It's actually like a like an arm. So he's laying on the bed, and and this arm is coming down. Right, but so I, imagine this thing coming at you. But I mean, the the parts to get. Oh, to they'd one, be like needle. -like. Yeah, yeah. Like that. But they're on this apparatus. Yes. that's massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But still, I mean, the fact that you can get that small is just like. Whew. Yeah. I, very I, precise. I think it's totally cool. Don't, okay. don't accidentally kick it while you're walking by. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't sneeze uh, while you're having that surgery. Yeah, we'll not bring Luke to yeah. that one. Mm. Okay. <laughs> now, this next news story, I have to say, this one is for you. C, what? C, C-128D? C-128D. This, this one's for you. Uh-oh. What do we got? Armed drones could be used by police in the U.S. state of North Dakota after local lawmakers legalized their use. Oh! While they will be limited to less than lethal weapons, tear gas, tasers, rubber bullets, and pepper spray could be used in theory by remote-controlled flying machines. In a classic case of unintended consequences, the original sponsor, Republican State Representative Rick Becker, said he was unhappy with the way that the legislation turned out. His original intention was to prevent law enforcement officials from using the unmanned aerial vehicles from conducting surveillance on private property without a warrant. 
Wow, talk about a change. He says, in my opinion, there should be a nice red line. Drones should not be weaponized, he said. The original draft of the House Bill 1328 said, a state agency may not authorize the use of, including granting a permit uh, permit to use, an unmanned aircraft armed with any lethal or non-lethal weapons, including firearms, pepper spray, beanbag guns, mace, and sound-based weapons. However, the state's police union amended the bill, limiting the ban to only lethal weapons, meaning that sounds can, sound cannons, rubber bullets could be used on police drones. It's unclear whether local police departments will use weaponized drones, even though they are technically legal. Wow. So for the last couple of weeks, we've been having this discussion back and forth with C-128D about... I think it's an argument. It, but I think okay, he just so, won. Yeah. Well, <laughs> at, at this point, North Dakota just sealed the deal on that. Oh, one. my gosh. How yeah. does this happen? Isn't this bureaucracy at its best where... Okay, here, here we go. I'm going to say drones cannot be used by police to have weapons and blah, blah, blah. And then they all sitting around the table say, oh... That's a great idea. Let's do that. Yeah. Let's put weapons on the drones. So, I think it's like oh. all this red tape gets all mixed up and I uh, just come on now. Uh, I, you know, okay, so <laughs> there's a meme that I've used a couple times. It's of Picard and Riker doing the double face palm. Oh, yes. Classic meme. With this story, I feel like one face palm doesn't cut it. You need a double face palm. <sighs> C128D just won the internet. Uh, big thanks this week to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us. If you found a news story you'd like to send, email it to newsroom at category5.tv. For all your tech news with a slight Linux bias, visit the category5.tv newsroom at newsroom.category5.tv. For the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Jeff Weston.